Thanks for coming to my panel. Today we're going to draw ponies. And the name of this panel is DIY because you can draw it yourself. Later on uh, the entrance or something, there's going to be a list where you can en enter your name. So you can come to the workshop, I think, like two hours after this. So today we're going to draw ponies, but we're not going to draw these horses. We're trying to draw these horses. <coughs> and um, hopefully, after listening to everything I said, you will be able to recreate what most other people can do too. Okay, so um, to say we, um, my crew uh, consists of three people, which is the first one, which is Ray or Trouble, and um, <laughs> um, he's been helpful in me trying to learn to draw because he knows a lot of things that can make your picture better. So he can later give you advice too, which is going to be helpful in the workshop part. And um, the next one is Dijero, which is basically like my emotional support dog because when I feel like I can't get anything else drawn, he's helping me to um, just pat my head and tell me everything's fine and I can keep going. So we can clap for him too. <laughs> So just a heads up, basically everyone needs a Dito, but you cannot have this one because he's mine. Um, lastly, I'm Sadenex, I'm the artist of this group, and I've been drawing for like well over five years. And I've been occasionally uploading to DeviantArt a lot, and there's basically every picture I did that's a major keystone from what I've improved. So the first, one, first picture you can still find is um, my first reference to my OC, which was Cloudstruck. And Ray has been reference, uh, referencing my first drawings to a lot to Swiss Army Knives, because I can't blame him. He's not wrong. And um, I, my like, point where I started was this point, which is not great. And then I went to trying to give my ponies a little bit cake so they have the, a little bit mass on their hips. And then I went a little overboard with that. <laughs> um, yeah, then I forgot how to draw bones because apparently ponies are magical and don't have bones anymore. Um, then I tried to go more into the show style direction. I <coughs> did bigger wings because I wanted to do my own thing and then I slowly but surely went into my own style that I have currently. And um, enough of me. You want to try drawing. So how you, can you get started? If we take this picture by Nana Yuka, um, you can see that she knows how to drop her ponies. And you can just split up your ponies in little sketches, which is like a skeleton sketch, so you can see how you want to place everything. And that's how everyone can start on drawing. Because if you can hold a pen, you can probably learn to draw. Because it's not hard to get an uneven circle, and not even I can do a perfect circle at this. So the foundation is basically what you need, and it's not that hard to get. So uh, we can start now at actually drawing. Uh, I'm going to be drawing on a tablet on this laptop, but you can use anything like pencils or anything related. Uh, so. And while she's drawing, I will be standing over here and look majestically as a moral Okay, so um, when you want to start, you want to start from bottom to top. So we'll start with the hat, which is basically just a circle you can place anywhere on your medium. And like I said, I don't know how to draw perfect circles too. And the guide in SpongeBob didn't help me either. So we'll just go with that. And um, you can part the hat in fourth. But um, to show that the head is not just a circle, but three-dimensional, you can part it in four ways. Um, for the references we need for later, you, you're going to part the uh, upper and lower ones, and this one you'll part, you'll part again. Um, 
these are going to be the lines where you'll put the snout and the horn, and the back one is for the ears. Um, uh, we're going to start with a simple side view of the pony. So we're going to uh, do a slightly smaller circle under the head, and then a bigger one for the butt. And if you want to connect this, you'll just do a curved line again. And you're going to go down and draw n more curved lines. So basically, pony drawing is just circles and lines. And then you can do half a circle and at one joint, go up at another joint, and again, do another curved line. Um, every leg has two joints for ponies. So if you want to let this pony have its hoof, a uh, hoof upwards, he can just uh, go upwards through the nice joint and then this. If you want to know where the bottom of your hoofs are, you're just going to do reference lines like at the bottom. And these are going to indicate for you later where it is. And <coughs> then we can also start at giving it weight. So we'll start with the ear because it's pretty simple to start from that. And for show style, you're going to just do basically an almond. And what I do is I give it a little bit more curve to have a s kind of semi-realistic style. And then you're just going to repeat, repeat this same pattern on the inner ear for the inner line. If you want to do a horn, you can just go straight upwards from this line and you'll have a horn. It's basically just a long cylinder or something. Um, for the snout, you can just use the line we did before, go straight out of the circle, and then just do a curve to get back into the circle so you'll have a mouth. If you then want your pony to smile because she's happy that she's going to be in this panel, um, you can just add the smile above the line you did here for the eighth. Um, you can then go down on the head, follow the head inwards a b little bit, and then go down to the body. And do the same with the other one too, so she has a neck. She doesn't snap when she walks or something. Um, and then you'll go down and go upwards again for a cute little pony butt. And we can, from there, get already to the back part, which is just the joint that goes outwards. So you just have this little space if you were going to just trace this line downwards. Um, and then do a curve. Thing is, if you do your pony like just straight, he's not going to have a good time walking. So we'll not do that. <laughs> um, if you need the flank, you do another half a circle, go inwards, and then go outwards again. Make sure that the leg goes thicker to the end, because the pony needs a good foundation to stand on. Um, if we're going to do the front leg like this, so the pony has held it upwards, you need to make sure that you know what you want to do. If you see the pony from the side, it's likely that um, the, f the more front part is in front of the back joints because she's holding it. So sh you can't just do any lines that strike into this because then your pony leg looks broken. So she didn't have a very good time skiing or something. And so we'll not do that and just follow the line back and words again. You can also, if you want to be fancy, you can do a shoulder on top of this. So you'll just close the leg again. Um, the back legs is basically the repeated pattern of the front ones, but tinier and more um, put upwards because the perspective is that you'll have your flank here and the other one is on the other side, smaller and more to the top. So you'll have to do the second leg shorter. And then you can just put it there. Make sure that the, leg, the legs on the other side are almost the same size. <laughs> and then we'll start with the wing. So if you want to go for the show style, a show style is just basically you draw an almond, and then you just slap wings on top of it, and it's show style wings. It's not hard to do those. But if you want to do a little more fancy thing, what I do is I take this almond, and then from there, at like a triangle, and do more feathers. 
if you look at uh, birds' feathers, they have like three to four rows of feathers that are layered on top of each other. And the ones more closer to the bone are the ones that are on top of the other ones. So you can just do smaller ones on here. Um, if you want to place the eye, you already have this big area, so you'll just put it right there and you have your skeleton sketch. And you can then uh, try to add the iris and make sure that you have enough place in the sclera because if you don't, your pony's going to look insane. So if you wanted to do like a mad pinkie pie, I mean, then you can just do the smallest you can do and just make it look back. I mean, if you want to scare your friends, that's a good way. But um, we want to look, make the pony look happy and just look, make it look to the front. And then you can add the lashes in the flow with the circle you did so that it's easier to place for you. If you have ponies like Pinkie Pie or you want to do anything more fancy, you can add more smaller lashes on the bottom, which is easier in this sketch because you still have the reference line you used. You can then repeat the same shape again and do the iris. Uh, pony eyes tend to show a lot of emotion, so the um, iris has to have a distinct shape. So if you do a small iris, the pony is kind of looking insane or scared, any, anything related. And the, if you do a very big pupil, um, the pony is mostly happy or also insane. It depends on the situation. Um, and if you want to then add the highlights, you can, you all have, again, circles. And I'm going to do them red so you can see them, which is one that's bigger and tilted. And they mostly go um, over the iris and pupil. And then you can do a smaller one, and you basically have your pony. Then if you want to do your own character, you can add um, a tail, which is basically um, at the highest point that the butt goes. And from there, you can just add any tail you want. And uh, for the mane, it depends on which pony you do. Some ponies do not have any banks, so the uh, banks just follow the head and then go down, which is for, I think, Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy the case. And for ponies like uh, Twilight, the banks go over the head, so from a thorn, you actually see the bangs slightly covering the eye most of the time. And this is how you draw a female pony. If you then want to like, have your pony transfer their gender, you can just do a square, and you almost have your male pony. <laughs> so doing a male pony is not very different from the female ones, because they only have slightly thicker flanks, because they need to be buff and cool and something. And they also have this big, just, square in their face instead of the cute little snout and if you want to do a princess it's basically the same thing but it's smaller and deeper down so you'll just do the same thing and do a hard jaw <laughs> and if, um, then for princesses the thing is they just have longer legs they don't have any different legs they're just elongated for some reason if you were five foot Princesses would be like six foot for some reason, because they were born that way. I don't know why size is such a thing in Equestria, but apparently it makes you a queen. Um, so for a reference picture, if we were going to do one for like an original character you did, you're going to need more than just one view. And also if you want to do a varying poses, you also need more than one view. And the side view is mostly just used for references, or if you have like a side view of a pony walking or anything related. But if you were going to um, do a picture, you most of the time need to use more than one of those. Um, so there's basically three poses, uh, or three sides to look at. You have the side view, the three-quarter view, and the front view. And they, if you do the three-quarter view, it's not very different from the first one. It's just more squished because you have still the same head and uh, you uh, just do the body more squished. So the overlapping part of the front and back body is, um, they overlap a lot. 
So you'll need to place everything differently. If you can still do the same thing for the head, except you need to do the eyes more inwards, and then overlap the snout with the body, uh, with the head. So you can then again draw the neck, but the neck this time snaps into the body because the neck is in front of the back and everything that's placed on there. So you need to draw the front uh, line in front of it, and. Uh, the eyes basically just get squished around because the eye you had before just gets shoved to the side and the other eye shows pretty small on the other side. If you add the legs then, wait. If you add the legs then um, you need to make sure that you can see the joints of both more. If you are going to do a whole shoulder, you can start it again here but you need to show the other leg where it's starting. Because um, if, if I were going to stand in front of you from the side, you can still see parts of my shoulder and you can s use your own anatomy to get references for ponies. It's not that every part, because of course, ponies don't have hands or feet, but you can still see the basic shape in, in your own body. And um, the flank gets also squished. It's not as wide as before, but still as high. And you can s still see the back joint, but again, it's squished, so it's not its own part anymore, like a triangle. It's more, it, it's only jumping up this time. So we'll have this like more for, from the front than like before from the side. And also the rib cage is this time bigger um, in front of the flank, so we need to draw the line into the flank. And um, if you then we're going to uh, draw your legs to the very end, you can still do the joints, but if you don't need them, it's easier to not do them because you can get confused easily. And if you were going to do the shoulder like me, you can see this shoulder coming out of the body. If you're not going to do it, it's just coming out of the rib cage again. Um, the eyes are basically the same, but you need to make sure that they're going to face in the t same direction. Unless you have derby, then it's not that important. But in every other case, um, if you still want to do your insane Pinkie Pie, you can just do small ones, and she's looking pretty crazy. But if you do a normal pony, um, you still have to have a big iris and pupil, and the other eye is almost filled out, but not completely. You still need to have some white space in it, because otherwise it just looks like you copied it in there and forgot to change it. And if you're going to draw the horn, it's under this line this time, and you can draw your circle and just start from there this time. Um, then the wings get also slightly squished to the back, so you need just to, um, they have like an angle this time, because before they're just laying there, doing their own thing, but this time you need to angle them a little bit upwards, the back, because you have this um, front shortening, which is making the wing look shorter, even though it isn't. But in this picture we need to show that, because the wing is facing to the back. Um, the tail is slightly seen here, but you cannot see the whole part where it starts from as to before. And you can just do your tail there. Um, this time, if we do, for, ex uh, for example, Pinkie Pie, we can then go down on the face, and she has her bangs like in the middle between her eyes. But if you have bangs that go, to, uh, um, that go up again, you don't do them between the eyes because if you look on your own head, you have uh, your whole forehead and there's where the hair starts. So you can't do them between the eyes because then you just have a problem with anatomy again. And from there you can just do your Princess Pinkie Pie and yeah, you have another view. And then we need the third view which is the front view. This time for the head, the head is slightly squished because the head is not a watermelon, it's not completely round, but it's squished to the sides a little bit. So it's a little bit shorter than uh, to the sides than it is to both the end and the upper thing. 
um, if you do the body, it's again um, directly under it, pretty in the middle from it. And this time we need to do a different cross for getting the um, proportions in the face right. So if you want to do circles and want to try where she's looking, you can just do one curved line for the middle of the head and another one uh, for where basically the eyes start, which is this, just this. So this time the pony would be looking in this direction. If I was going to do like this, it was looking kind of downwards. So um, this also helps you if, ha if you only have a little thumbnail, so you want to know what you draw. You can just do anything, make her look this way, she's standing, great, and you have a little thumbnail so you know what you want to do. And for the, front uh, for the front view, this time we're going to just make her look a normal, different way, she's going to look towards you. And the legs are not as curved before because the legs are only curved from the side, but from the front uh, they can't be curved because uh, the legs don't have squishy parts in them that are just thinner than the other parts because they get evenly bigger to the end. So uh, the legs are not exactly straight, but for the most part. If you then uh, want to draw the legs with a little bit of flesh on them, you can um, still go bigger to the end because from this view it's still bigger on the bottom. And we'll just do one leg behind the other kind of. You, in the most cases you cannot see any of the hind legs unless she's like having this stance where she's almost falling on the ice. So it looks kind of goofy so I would not recommend doing that but it's kind of easier to, the, to do the front one if you just want to figure out how you want to do like bangs for your own original character or anything related. Um, the ears are also squished because they need space between them so that the hair can go through there. Um, then the mouth is easier to do because you just have a line. It's just slap a line on there and you almost have your pony done. Um, for the eyes, you need to make sure that if you do both eyes, you need to have about one eye space between them because otherwise they look like their eyes are just on the front of the head and not, they can't be seen that way on the sides of their heads. And then just make her happy again, do your neck thing and you almost have your pony done. If you then want to do another horn, you can just add a circle in about yeah, one third, one fourth, something like that and just do your cone again. If you want to wings, wings are almost easier because they also, they're just beans. You just have beans on the side of your pony and that's also it. And the um, thing is, you can, you need to try to not make your lonely cross-eyed. So you need to try to even, evenly distribute um, both parts of the eye. So now it's looking derpy because one eye is shorter than the other. But if you're going to do the same thing, it's normal again. And for basically every type of pony, be it a princess, a cold, anything, it's the same for the snout. So you don't need to change anything here. The only thing you need to change are the eyes and yeah, maybe the legs. Um, if we're then going to do a female again, you can just do bigger lashes and that's fine. Um, if you're going to do like a filly or a cold, they have rounder eyes, so it's not that elliptical, it's more like a circle. And they also have uh, more highlights because they need to be cuter than the bigger ones. And yeah, um, if we're, um, now we're going to go over shadows. So if you want to go show style, the only thing you need to do for shadows is if you have, say, the side view, you're just going to take anything black and put it on the back, uh, back legs and wait. And congrats, they're darker. That's it. You also maybe need like a circle under them and that's anything the show does. Maybe in like cinematic shots, they have a little bit shadows on the face, but there's nothing more than, that, than they do. But you came here to learn something, so I'm gonna teach you how you can easily understand shadows. Um, 
uh, the first thing you always need to make sure where is the light coming from? So if you want to have your pony just strolling through the park, having a good time, the sun is maybe above them or something, so you can indicate for yourself where the sun is coming from. So this time it would be coming from like the back of the pony. So you need to do the shadows uh, on the parts that are the least near them, so the most far away. So for example, um, we're going to do it under the mane, because the mane is casting a shadow because of the sun onto the head. Um, we're going to do on the front because a pony is not flat, a pony is three-dimensional, so you need to look which parts are going to be uh, the brightest and which are going to be the darkest. And the darkest parts are mostly the ones um, that are like curved outwards uh, away from the light. So if, we ha if, you, have a, if you have your leg, um, you just do it there because it's, it curves inwards again at that point. And yeah, um, uh, under the wing is also good because the wing also casts a lot of shadow because it does not have any space between the body and itself when it's closed. And yeah, that's almost it for shadows. If you want to do the highlights, which are um, the, one, the parts that are like um, struck by the light, that are, I'm, going, I'm going to do them red this time. Um, they are always facing um, the sun. And you, all, you sometimes have problematic um, parts, which are, for example, maybe this part in the main, because this part in the main is also cast by a shadow, but it, in this picture it would look like it has light. So you just do the um, lightning down here, maybe add a little bit of shadow there because um, the ear casts a shadow, and yeah. Um, if you then are uh, want to, if you then think that your pony does not look three-dimensional enough, you can still go over with a very light color and do the parts at the highest, um, uh, which are, for example, the flank or the middle of the leg or anything related. Um, but they do not need to be as bright as the other light because um, it's just to show the three-dimensional space there. Um, if you then want to have your light on the front view, it's harder to see where which part is coming from. Because, for example, the mouth and snout, they're, whoop, they're uh, way brighter because they are in front of everything on the face. The eyes are more further back, the uh, ears up on the back of the head, but three, but still they get lightning, and yeah. Okay, so um, if you then are bored of everything you did, because you don't want to do your closed wings anymore, you can look at the show again, and they do their wings just, they have one, two, three, and four, and that's almost it. But yeah, this does not look very good. Um, you can, again, do your skeleton sketch, which is you start at the base, then you have one like finger or wing, whichever you want to call it. Uh, you get the second one, the third one, and a small, tiny one at the bottom. So the uh, thing with this is um, they can use their wings as like hands and something related, so you need to have at least one joint in them too if you want to do that. So then just do your curved lines again, do thickness and um, every pony in My Little Pony has two rows of wings, so they'll just have their second part of wings there. And that's it for show wings. If you want to do something semi-realistic, which is what I do, um, I first do this weird shape, which is not what it looks like right now, but um, you get at the base at the first, uh, in the beginning, and then you go upwards, curve, and then you have your basic wing shape, which is kind of referencing to the um, princess's wings, like Princess Twilight or Luna. And then I add more feathers onto that, which is one row of feathers, two, and then for the first part in the bag, like a third one. And the thing with, thing with this is it's a kind of weird to shade, because you need to make sure that you have a little bit of shadow there because this wing part is in front of the others. And to the back, you always have a shadow on the, the feathers you had before. But then you need to make sure that you still have light on these parts.
because the light comes from above in this case. And it, yeah, you just need to practice that a lot to get to a certain point. Um, if we're going to go into detail with the eyes, uh, we do again our like elliptical shape. So not a circle, but a squished circle. Not as, um, it's more squished than the hat from the front. And if you then want to place the eyeliner right, which every pony has, because apparently every pony buys makeup in their world, um, you can do your reference line like this. So not halfway parting it, like one third. And the um, uh, eyeliner on the front goes further down than on the back. And you just trace around your part there, and you have your eyeliner. Um, then if we're going to make it look back, you do another elliptical shape. But um, depending in which direction it's looking, now it's looking upwards. It was going to look into um, the side completely. You need to make sure that you touch the bottom of the sclera on the right. And um, that goes for every direction. If it's going to look upwards, a part of its eye is going to just be missing because um, the eyeball is basically round and you have your um, iris on there and the way it's moving around is just part of it is gonna be missing and you almost never have all um, every part of the eye showing except when a pony is like again insane or something they get smaller and you can see a lot of it but in any case um, that's different than that you have just lots of it covered. And yeah. OK, so uh, um, if you were going to try to do shadows on your own and you, and you don't know how to get started, you can just have your plushie sitting somewhere and shine like a flashlight on it. And this way you can see which part of the pony is getting lit the most from that direction. So I think most of us have a pony plushie at home. And that's one of the easiest references you can use in your own home. Because I think it's easier to use references you can actually move around that are three-dimensional um, other than just using any base or something you find on the internet. Because you can understand this part easier. Because um, when you move your flashlight around, you see how the lights and shadows move. So you don't just trace anything on there that you don't understand, but you can actually see why everything has shadows. And it's not just that plushies work, it's also toys like blind bags or brushables or anything. And you can use a lot of mediums to get to drawing, which is um, what I did first is paper. So you just don't need anything fancy for that. It's just paper, it's just pencil, it's anything. Um, for paper, the thing is, if you want to get into drawing and selling your artwork, you need to make sure that you have good quality paper. Um, a lot of the paper you can buy, which is like copy printer paper, is about 80 grams per meter. And the thing with, with that is, uh, a lot of pencils are too thick and get soaked in from it. So you have a lot of color that bleeds out or anything like that. Um, also, you cannot use anything uh, with water on it. So watercolor is just completely nonsense on using copy, um, copy printer paper. Um, every medium that you have for paper has its own kind of paper. There are mixed media papers, but they kind of yeah, I think they're just, they're okay for everything, but they have their worst parts for every medium too. Um, what I use is I use um, a lot of thick paper, like 190 grams, because it feels fancier, because you can just bend it a little bit and just, it, not, it just doesn't rip as easily as every other paper. Um, for pencils, you also don't need anything fancy. You can get cheap pencils that are good, I think my first cheap ones that were good were like three bucks or something. Um, then you have watercolors, which is slightly more expensive because the thing is, uh, in Germany we can um, differentiate between the good and the bad because uh, the bad one, which, which is like school grade watercolor, is called Deckfarben, which is, they are chalky when you get a lot of it on the paper. They don't blend too well and anything like that. Um, they also need a lot of water to activate. And if you have what's here called aquarelle, it's more artist grade. 
So you need less water for more pigment. They're also, in general, more pigmented. And you can, um, but these are kind of expensive. But you can get some in cheap stores, but not a lot of it. Um, there's also like stuff like markers. They are in a broad wide uh, price range again. But you need special paper for markers because they tend to bleed through multiple sheets of paper. So if you have like, I think the ones that I had, through normal copy printer paper, they bleed to two or three one, uh, sheets of it. And um, it's also depending up to you what you want to use. If you're going to use digital, there's also more differences because um, you have basically two types of um, tablets because there's ones without um, a screen, which is what I use right now. And the one that I have at home is a screen. But they are both kind of hard to work with because the first one just copies uh, the screen you are showing on your laptop and just basically projects it onto the um, part where you're drawn. But you cannot see it on here because you need to look up to your screen. Um, and the other one is kind of harder to get lines with because not a lot of them lay completely flat on a table. Um, the ones with a screen are also a lot more expensive. And the um, thing is, uh, for my opinion, the ones with a screen are slightly hardest to sketch with because you try to see what you do, but then you're just used to having it on paper and just feels weird. So um, you don't need to spend a lot of money to get good art. Of course, it's going to take a lot of time, but um, anyone can try to draw and just get into there. Okay, so um, as Ray helped me a lot, he also had a, has some advice for you guys, and he's going to show a little bit of it. Ah, okay, for the documentation, oh, of course. Well, I think you would hear me anyway. So, um, yeah, I couldn't do that. I will be honest with you. Um, like, easily as that, no, I don't have the years of experience. What I do have, and what of all of you also probably have, is a working pair of eyes. Yes, an amazing ability. And um, that is something that will help you with making your art better once you are drawing it or it is, is or it is drawn, but um, I know you all probably have seen a picture and you see, oh, this, this leg, this, this leg is not, it, it's too big, why is it too big, or why do the eyes go in different directions? Probably all have, and this right here was a very short drawing, like a couple minutes, right? But if you draw for a long, long time, even if you make a mistake, if you draw it long enough, it starts to look right. Because um, that's why a lot of very, very complex pictures have like a glaring proportion error. Because the artist, he has been looking at it, and he has been looking at it, and eventually he's just like, yeah, that, that's how legs look. They just do. And an easy tip to avoid that is get a second person. Get someone who has not spent like 20 hours looking at the same picture of the same crooked leg, and he will tell you, this leg is crooked. I know it hurts. I know it hurts. You have spent hours on it, probably. You have like made the skeleton work. You started the shading, and then someone tells you, this leg is it's not completely OK. And I know a lot of, for a lot of people, for a lot of artists, it can, it can hurt. But trust me, get someone. Let them look at your piece and let them uh, and ask them honestly if they see any errors. And to reduce the pain of these errors, ask several times. The best thing I've ever seen an artist do is make live streams when he makes a commission and invites the person that he makes a commission for. He just invites them into the chat and tells them, hey, um, can you look what I'm doing and say I'm making it right? So if you ever make it for someone else, have someone look at it. And if you make it for yourself, also have someone look at it. Another big uh, problem with drawing um, yourself and alone 
is that oftentimes you have a different idea. You have a different idea in your head from what a lot of people would consider good. And it's fine if you make your own thing for yourself, but I know a lot of people care about recognition because no man is an island. And if you need help deciding or finding your own style that you uh, also assume other people would like, then uh, you should also look at like, as an artist. That's also a very important step because nearly no one just knows what looks good. That's, that's not something we all have and we all have a different idea of it and that's good. And everyone should find their own style because somebody said there's no bad art, but there's, there's, there's different art like the Swiss army knife ponies. I'm, I'm pretty sure somebody likes those. I'm looking at you. <laughs> somebody thought that they look good, but admitting that something maybe doesn't look as good as you assumed is very important to make it better. And like you have seen her, you have seen the first pictures, you have seen something very simple and it's not very good, but you have seen the growth, you have seen the different stages, the different learning aspects, and that is a very critical part. You have seen that it was step by step by step. First you have a two-dimensional Swiss knife, then you put some cake in it, then you put too much cake into it, and suddenly you decide, I don't need cake, I need bones. And that's a step by step progress. Don't, don't try to do anything at all. Like every but what if it's a bone cake? Yes. Um, try to do it stepwise. Look at your pieces of art, ask others, and try to fix one mistake at a time. You can make a picture that isn't perfect. You can make two pictures that isn't perfect. But eventually, with step by step, you'll make it right. Okay, so uh, we now have about 50 minutes for any questions you all have. So anyone just raise their hands if they have a question and... Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I've got one question about uh, the paper for marker pens. Um, I tried uh, some uh, two different brands of paper really made for marker pens and it felt like drawing on the German word would be Löschpapier. Uh, it ble bled out a lot more than the copy uh, paper. Uh, I, d I don't know, it shouldn't be that way, but uh, is there any brand that you can uh, without okay, any... Okay, so the um, like go-to markers that any artist has in their head when they hear alcohol-based markers is Copics. And I tried the Copic marker pad or is what it's called, and it's called bleed proof. Of course it bleeds like probably less than one millimeter, but it does not bleed a lot. So I would use that. Problem with that is I think it's only like 90 grams, so it's pretty thin paper, but it has one side you can draw on it. It does not bleed for me. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, you show us uh, the muzzles for the princess uh, and the ponies, but you don't show us the muzzles for the stallion. How do we make the muzzle for the stallion in different views? Um, I, I showed the stallion before the princess, which is, it's a big square that starts, wait. Um, the square starts at about uh, the same line as the normal female one does. I can't find my mouse. And um, it just goes down slightly, so it's not as straight upward as the female uh, as the female one but um, it goes basically the same way because it didn't just turns in and it's just a square you can put on top of the circle but um, you need to make sure that it has a slight angle to it Yeah, something specific. Uh, what about the placement of the highlights in Philly eyes? It just never looks right to me. Um, you can part... Wait, I have the eye somewhere. Um, you can part your eye basically into different parts and um, you still have some of the pupil left on top of the highlight, but it kind... Wait... Um, 
Um, if you look at this one, you, you're going to place uh, your... So we're going to place the pupil into this iris. Um, you have it over overlapping this part, but you still have something that goes towards the eyeliner. So um, you don't just block out every color you had from your pu pupil um, into, in that uh, direction, but only a little bit. So, uh, and the other one is just inside the iris itself. D is that uh. enough help, boy? What about uh, the Philly eyes, which have oh, three Philly. highlights? Ah, I, I understand female. Um, um, if, if you have your circle and you're going to do it there, uh, you basically start with the same one again, only that it's slightly bigger, but it still doesn't completely block out the whole iris. And the other one kind of overlaps with the bottom um, part of the iris, and the third smallest one is just inside the iris itself. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm trying to get into digital art and um, I was wondering, can you like uh, suggest some programs to use? I, I don't have the money for Photoshop, you know? Okay, the thing is, uh, I'm using Paint Tool Style, which is, I think, like f for 40 bucks or something. So it's not cheap, but it's not a monthly sus subscription, just uh, Photoshop. Um, if you want, you can actually use Paint. I've seen at least one person that I know of, which is called Selicar, that does a lot of <laughs> that does a lot of MS Paint, and she still gets everything. Um, in, in maybe pix uh, like pixelated than other pictures. But it's um, not bad to start with. I personally have a grudge against GIMP. Um, I can't use it. Um, but there's, I think, PaintNet and other people use Krita, what it's called. And Fire Alpaca was one of those two. And those are great programs to start with. All right, thanks. Okay, so if um, no one has any questions, uh, I was told that the um, list again for the workshop that's in like one or two hours is uh, at the entrance. And for everyone that wants to pick up kind of paper, um, I have three different kinds of paper, which is a brown one, which is called craft paper, a uh, black one and a white one. If you want to pick those up, those are free. You can just take a sheet of them and do whatever you want with them. You can also bring them later to the workshop and I can show you some tricks to work with them. Okay, so I hope everyone learned enough so you can maybe do your own characters, do your own pictures, get started, and be less depressed when you see those godly art pictures on DeviantArt or something. And I hope that I was kind of good to understand and not too nervous. <laughs> Thank you.